Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, slide on over, like and subscribe. We've got some little work to do in here. Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, slide on over, like and subscribe. We've got some little work to do in here. GoPro, stop recording. Hey everybody. Yeah, we're not breaking anything today. Mine, but we're gonna do a little repair on the robot here. So this one is 10 years old. This one's about two years old. So I got a bearing in there that's a little loose and when it's done attaching this cow. Um, we might give it a hand too. So we can look at that cow. So 1207, as you see, she's been incomplete at the beginning a little bit, or by milkings. So it gets her, but it takes a while to get her on. As you see, there's stall time of 12 minutes, eight minutes. So we're averaging just around six and a half, maybe 620 for how long it takes from when that cow gets ID'd to when she leaves to milk. So. Someday I'll give a full interview or full understanding of what goes on on the robot, but it's attached it. And she moved. So she might need to be retrained as part of management and things like that. So we'll walk over, let that one finish up. So this is a 10 year old one. What it's doing right now is washing the teats. So it's got an individual cup that comes down, washes the teats. It's like a jacuzzi. Uh, water and air swirling around uh, with a little bit of sanitizer in it and then it actually puts it in its own uh, canister and drains it out at the end and then you got your four milk hoses so looking at her 1220 she's 22 days fresh which means she had a calf 22 days ago um, she's the first lactation animal making 70 pounds right now um, if we look at milking so actually by day she's getting better as her average goes on Milks cows all day long. So we used to milk cows in a tie stall um, three times a day. Not very fun. So if I click back to milking, so right now this milking, um, she's probably milking three and a half, four times a day. Um, she's expected to make 15.6. Tells per quarter what her flow is, how much she's actually made against how much she's expected. Um, so it keeps track of everything. Like I said, so she's yellow, so she's under six hours or seven hours since last milk. Um, and she's a first lactation animal, so she's moving along. So when it's all done milking, and she made 17 out of the 15 point, she made 17.1 compared to the 15.6 she was expecting. Sprays the iodine, back flushes, cleans the camera, releases the cow. The deck goes on every four milking. Um, because we're not sand, we run it like that. When the next cow's away, I'm granted I'm standing here. Get you going, girl. All day long that happens. Very minimal human interaction. The cows we actually work with would be like fresh cows, cows that we see are getting sick. Um, you don't, as a manager, you don't spend less time in a barn when you put robots in. I'd say you put spend more, um, but you focus on the cows that need that time instead of doing a broad management level as far as managing milkers, things like that. So, no, like I said, it's been 10 years and I worked with D Laval, I interned with D Laval Oceania in New Zealand. Um, like I've said prior, and then I worked 
um, for De Laval Corporate, um, covering America, or North America, went to Mex Mexico and Chile a few times and stuff like that. Um, did that for like three and a half years. Now I've been at my job where I am now for over two, almost two and a half years. So cover a uh, like two hour radius and have 20 some robots right now that I work with. So this is at home. So that's what we do with robots. And that's how we milk our cows. So what I'm changing, there's a bearing in there and there's the same one on the other side. They look like this. I know, I'll be done soon. So, with the head, as you see right there, it's got some slop. The other side I think is actually pretty good still. We're gonna change both of them anyways. She really wants to get milk. So now you can really see right in there. I guess you really can't. Maybe you can. But, got the covers off, the guard, take it off the other side, pop that out. Also noticed there's a crack right there I don't know if it's focused enough to see it but there's a crack there and then on the bottom side there's a crack starting on that one I welded with some stainless um, but I do have a full piece I might switch it right out because I don't have the ambition of going to get stainless wire because I know I don't have any yeah so i got two of the three encoders off there's one up there can't see with the light yeah right there probably still can't see but that tells it where the arm is so i'll get that cracked piece out so this just swings out of the way now take the guards out which there's grease points behind it so nobody ever greases them if you leave the guards on but, yeah I wish I had some stainless rod. I don't know. So there's a little guard here too. And then there's the bolts underneath. You take that stop piece out and well you gotta rotate it around because it's stuck there. But I'm gonna finish this project up first before I dig into that. So now that I got that off, it's easy to work on it. Just take that off, take the two uh, lock collars off and put the new bearings on. Have to tap on that side. Thought I brought a hammer. No? Maybe not. Uh, that's a hammer. There we go. Oh yeah, that one's toast. Look at that. All the inserts out. I knew it was on its way out a while ago and it's been melting cows so good that we just haven't touched it. Little new part, old part. New part. Got that little lip collar and everything. Old part. You can see the balls in there. No lip collar. It's gonna be good. Tucked you in my shirt. Give you a little bit of a perspective of what goes on while I'm working. Uh -oh. the lock collar on. Oh, gotta loosen the lock collar up. Slide that all the way on. Give it a little tap, 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 baroo. Don't want to lube that up because don't want it spinning on it. Wearing good. Do it on the other side.
I'm gonna switch these inserts while I'm at it. Is that one loose? That one's loose. Um, brass bushings that actually go on the encoder. Since I'm gonna be right here, we're gonna take this apart. I'm gonna wait on somebody to give me a hand. I can do it by myself, but it's always nice if somebody holds that while I try to loosen the Allen wrenches so I don't strip them out. That makes for a headache, let me tell you about it. So I'm tuck that back in there. Gotta turn it a little bit or something. There we go. See, two hands, it's always nice because then somebody could be putting the bolts in while I hold this. Because I left the bolts right here. <laughs> Fell out of them. Got the other bolts. One side's done, that side stays in because it sticks out of the shaft. So. Got the stop out of there, so if you put that in the wrong way and that head turns around, it'll shear all the wires off that go through the port there. But, yeah, just get that little piece out. That's the stop itself, so it just goes off one side to the other as it rotates around the motor. Take these six bolts out, and I think I'm gonna go see if I can weld it. It looks pretty straight still. I got a new one, but might as well, might as well weld it. New one. Brands making new, no cracks. Ended up, I only had, the one I had was for a right-handed robot. So that one's on the right, this one's the left. The stop sides are different, so ended up throwing some bead on there. It'll last forever. I've welded more stainless stuff on here. Um, like the gate on that one, it broke off right here, or actually right here on the one. Um, and we weld all our blocking fence to it, so not the best thing to do, but we're getting back together. I'll finish the encoder, put this encoder on. Um, grease that fitting, grease that fitting, but yeah, I'm not in tight yet, so gotta tighten that encoder in, that bolt, and that threads down and then uh, get, get it snug, and then you got a lock nut that goes on the bottom that you tighten up, and that sits just like that. So, so when you work on them, you release the hydraulics so that um, it doesn't randomly spin around and get you. So, that's just the hydraulics. I got it off on the screen. We're gonna start, load the pump, get some pressure, flips itself around. So that stop looks okay. Now we'll rotate it over. That looks good. We're gonna line it up, make sure we're good. So then you tell it to do an endpoint, which means it finds itself. You find yourself, bud? It finds himself into trouble all the time. So now it parks itself and it's happy. But what I'm gonna do is uh, magazine. Well, those are up. We're gonna drop the shelf. We'll flip this over. So just invert, and then we're gonna move the arm up and just make sure it's level. So, as you can't see because there's no light in there, I'll get out of light for you guys. See how that's not level? Well, I can see it's not level. So we gotta adjust the stop to get there. The other one is tilted this way, so turn the main laser on. This should go from there to the bottom corner, so. Ooh. Don't know where that went. 
we're a little high so I need that so we'll turn this and you'll see as I turn this so very very slowly that it's sinking itself down there we go so now the lights not as bright as I'd like it to that's a lot closer Apparently I gotta be up a little bit but then we'll tighten this jam nut up and we'll call it good on this one so I ended up putting two of these brass bushings in that one as well they go through this encoder bolt and I knew this side this one our number one robot um, was loose up in there and as you see that is supposed to look like that so it wore out in there Let's grab a pair of Push the bottom one out. Oh, the bottom one's wore out too. So they wear out over time. They're brass, they're meant to do that. There we go. Ah, oh, there's one of them. And then there's the other one. So, um, movement of the arm breaks them in half. So, what we do is put a new one in. Put that encoder bolt in, like I said, tells it where where to go. Um, see, this one's got a little crack on the bottom, but the top's good still. So, just a little crack. At some point, I'll have to take that apart. It takes a long time for them to crack, keep cracking. So, um, so I'll slide this back in, and they're all out there waiting on it. So, can't keep the ladies waiting. Check out how it's doing now. Nice and tight. It's working well. So that's the cleaning process, like I said. And that does each quarter. You can change the settings on that um, as far as how long it's on. And if you want to double clean, um, a little light for you guys so you can see all the action in there. So, uh, both of them are cleaning. So she's supposed to make 27.8 pounds. And she's supposed to make 36.8. So let's see, 11.07. She's red. She's further out. She only gets milk two times a day. Maybe a little less. Probably just about the time today. So. What are you doing, girl? Catching well, picking up cups well. So this is a teacup cleaner solution actually coming out. Uh, yeah, I think I'm done here for the day. So, all hooked up. Let's see, actually, what she's making. Yeah, so 80 pounds at 141 days of milk. Not bad. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this. Give you a little insight of what I actually do for my actual job, my full time job. It's one of my full time jobs. So, at some point, we'll go out in there. And uh, I'll show you what goes on in the barn and how cows work in a robotic barn. So, but till then, appreciate you guys watching. Make sure if you haven't done so, slide on over, like and subscribe. Um, yeah, have a good one.